you say you guys kind of work to go backwards and you kind of say who's the right candidate for this building that will ultimately probably move in. I mean, what kind of criteria are you guys bouncing around aside from like just what size are in maybe the industry? How do you kind of narrow that down? Yeah, so we really have our fingers on the heartbeat of the market. We have 13 and a half million square feet in a pretty small area. So we know every tenant that's out there. We see them before most people see them and we can react a lot quicker than most mm -hmm. people. So we tend to be one of the first ones to get in front of these deals when they're new to market. So we know where the activity is coming from, what sector of the business economy is most active. So for instance, like right now it's uh, PPE, so personal protective equipment, safety, yeah. supply guys, which used to traditionally sell to contractors. Now they're selling to hospitals, which is kind of interesting. You know, the gowns and the masks and whatnot. Those guys are on fire right now. Pharmaceutical is very, very active. Food, uh, both uh, cooler and freezer are very, very active. So if a space has air conditioning, clearly it'd be a very good option for a pharmaceutical distribution company. If a space has good clear height and small office, it's probably gonna be a good fit for a PPE guy who just needs to rack a ton of storage goods that go in and out all the time. If it's 36 foot clear with a seven inch slab, it'd be great for like an Amazon or a Wayfair or someone who's gonna rack that tall uh, all the way up to the deck. I think it just comes with knowing who's in the market, why they're active, understanding, you know, who's out there and why. And then once mm -hmm. you kind of get that down, you'll know which spaces are appropriate for which people. Like a janitorial supply company is probably never going to go lease a 18 foot clear air conditioned building with 5,000 feet of office space and like a small lab component or something. But that's a good fit for someone else. So you have to look at the size of not only the box, but the office space and the attributes of the building and who's currently in the area. Like if it's heavily cruise related tenancy in that area, there's probably a really good reason to probably buy a port. So you have to have a lot of thought and intent that goes into your strategy and it has to be decided day one of getting the listing agreement signed. It can't be like an afterthought.